Hello and welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the editor and I have been since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF calibrator with 16 years of experience. In today's video we're looking at the new LED TV from Sharp, the UI7652. If you like our reviews and want to see more of them while supporting our channel, please like and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell to be informed every time we upload new video content. The Sharp UI7652 is a budget level LCD TV which uses a direct LED backlight without local dimming and a 4K UHD Sharp UV2A open cell VA panel. It's available in screen sizes of 60 and 70 inches with the 60 inch we're reviewing here retailing at £499 at the time of this review in September 2019. The UI7652 is part of the Aquas lineup with Aquas Net Plus Smart TV System, Active Motion 400, Ace Pro Ultra Engine, Harman Kardon Sound System and HDR10 Playback. So what kind of performance can we expect from a Sharp TV at this price point in 2019? The Sharp is certainly a TV built to occupy a budget price point and that can be seen with the build quality and design. While more expensive models this year have gone for bezel-less designs and thin panels, the Sharp has an obvious panel bezel at the sides and top of the screen with a larger bar to the bottom of the set. There are logos for Aquas, Harman Kardon and Sharp printed on the bezel. The build quality is acceptable with hard plastics used in a gunmetal grey finish and two small feet at either end of the TV. The 60 inch screen will require you to have a mounting surface of at least 50 inches wide to fit the feet comfortably. The TV does feel secure on the stand feet and it doesn't weigh nearly as much as some higher end TVs. The rear of the set is plastic in nature with a raised section in the centre area that houses the fixed power supply to the left and the connections are sideways and rearward facing to the right side. Looking at the sideways connections, first we have a CI slot, SD card reader, a service jack and headphone jack. Below these are a USB 2.0 port, HDMI slot and a TV and satellite antenna. The rear facing connections are a further two USB and HDMI ports along with an optical digital output, Ethernet, stereo RCA and component RCA inputs. The remote control with the Sharp is what we'd expect at this price point. It is a grey plastic affair with a logically laid out arrangement of buttons. There are direct access keys for YouTube, Netflix and Netplus Smart TV and while the remote feels plastic, light and cheap, it does fit with the rest of the package and it should last the life of the TV. As we always do within our reviews, we measure the out of the box picture presets to find those that get as close as possible to the industry standards. The idea of this is that a TV must get close to these standards in at least one of its picture modes so end users can see the content as it was mastered and intended to be seen. Calibration is a goal for some users, but for the majority this is just not an option so actually knowing how accurate the out of the box presets are is very important in any honest TV review. In respect to this budget, Budget Sharp TV, it's unlikely that anyone buying such a model would pay for a professional calibration, so making sure there is at least one preset which reaches or gets as close as possible to the industry standards is very important. We see absolutely no point in assessing and reviewing TVs in only the best calibrated picture modes as this doesn't reflect what the vast majority of buyers will experience with this TV. Calibration and measurement is important for the overall assessment of a TV but we don't only focus on the calibrated performance here at AV Forums. So just how close does the picture get to the standards out of the box? The most accurate picture mode on the Sharp is Movie, which changes to Personal when you make any adjustments. We used a Gamma setting of 2.4 and Colour Temperature of Warm. Looking at the grayscale first, we can see that there is a lack of red energy across most of the brightness points, with too much blue and green lacking in the brightest part of the track. However, while this reads as if it is a major problem, the Gamma is tracking close to 2.4 and our Delta E errors are below the visible threshold of 3 until around 70% stimulus and higher. 
So, while well, the graph could look better, given this is a budget LCD TV, the movie preset is fairly reasonable when it comes to accuracy. There are issues, such as a distinct darkness to gamma at 10%, which results in helping the screen crush blacks, and we have a hint of too much blue in the whites when watching actual film and TV content. We really can't expect much better at this price point, and what we do have is decent enough to provide an image that will look fairly natural and accurate. Moving to the HD Rec 709 color gamut, and again we have a reasonable amount of accuracy at this level of the market. There are errors in hue and saturation, which we can see within the saturation tracking chart, but the errors are in areas where they will not have too much impact on actual viewing material with film and TV content. Magenta has a large hue error and blue has issues with saturation, but everything else is within acceptable tolerances. With actual viewing material, we doubt many viewers would actually see the errors on screen without a far more expensive reference image sat next to this sharp. As such, the out-of-the-box viewing is fairly decent and somewhat towards the standards. We have to mention that while most other UI7652 models will also measure close to our review sample, at this level of the market, panel variance will be present and can affect image quality. The Sharp UI7652 has basic calibration controls available within the menu system. Mainly this is a single point grayscale adjustment and a full on colour management CMS, or at least something that looks like a usable CMS. Moving to the grayscale first, and using the single point grayscale controls, we did our best to balance out the tracking to get delta E errors as far under the visible threshold as possible, and try not to add any new errors like too much red in the blacks. Thankfully, we were able to do just that with all errors at 2 and under, which means they shouldn't be visible to the eye. Gamma also tracks close to our desired 2.4 curve. Given the lack of control for the white balance, we were satisfied that the results obtained with the grayscale are entirely acceptable and cause no visible issues with image quality. While correcting the grayscale white balance, we re-measured the Rec. 709 colour gamut and with some slight manipulation of the CMS at certain points, we managed to get extremely good results. Colours at 75% saturation and below track well to their given points and as such we find Delta E errors are all under 1, which is well below the visible threshold, meaning errors are unseen to the eye with film and TV content viewing. This is a very good result for such a budget TV. Getting the main issues out of the way first, the peak brightness of the Sharp is 245 nits, which is a similar figure at this price point to the recently reviewed Hisense and Panasonic LCD models. Sadly, there's no Dolby Vision support, so the Sharp is only capable of playing back HDR10 static metadata content. Tone mapping is also not as advanced as other brands, with a standard track to just over 100 nits and then a steady roll off to a hard clip at 80% stimulus. Looking at the PQ EOTF results, the white balance is very good with the EOTF tracking on the standard yellow guide until rolling off at around 120 nits to a hard clip. This means that bright highlights will just be solid without any detail within these specular highlights and peak brightness is only 245 nits, so there is a lack of dynamic range. The P3 colour gamut results are restricted within the saturation tracking chart with 75% and 100% point very close to each other, as the 100% points cannot reach the maximum reach of the P3 gamut. The Sharp only manages 80% coverage. The 75% saturation and below tracking points are fairly accurate, which should translate to decent colour reproduction within HDR content, but we did note that colour luminance, the brightness, was low, so colour volume is not as full as it should be. We measured the BT2020 coverage as 55% XY and 58% UV, with P3 coverage at 76% XY and 80% UV. Contrast performance was 2,526 to 1 with SDR and 2,848 to 1 with HDR. 
The UI7652 was tested in isolation and also in a comparison with the Panasonic GX800 LCD, which is a 58-inch edge-lit LED, costing roughly around the same price. Both sets were calibrated to the industry standards. The first thing we noticed was the poor viewing angles on the Sharp, which affected image contrast and colours as soon as you start to get off axis and especially around 20 degrees onwards. This will mean that any seat in your living room that is not directly in front of the screen will not be getting the best possible picture. We also noted that black levels were also quite poor and also a dark grey with no shadow detail available or visible in the near black areas of the image. Instead, those areas were just clumps of dark grey as you can see when compared directly with the Panasonic. The Sharp also has two warmer tint to images with a distinct yellow tint even after calibration to the correct white point. This does make skin tones sometimes look too yellow and unnatural. Upscaling of SD and HD images is decent, but there are signs of edge enhancement that cannot be switched off, and it also appears that there's some kind of noise reduction filter also being applied behind the scenes. This did give images a slightly processed look, and while with normal TV programs it wasn't really an issue, it did become more apparent with film and movie content. Motion is also decent with 50Hz content, and with 24 frames per second there was a small amount of induced judder, with frame drops every now and again. Panel uniformity was also very poor for a direct LED backlit VA panel, with a patchy blotchiness across the panel, which was visible as dirty screen effect, with content such as football and large areas of one colour during camera pans. HDR performance is also a little disappointing on the Sharp with no real dynamic range to images. The poor blacks are once again an issue with black bars never reaching a decent level of black and some blooming can also be seen from time to time. Plus, if it's a black or dark scene, the black bars are the same level of black within the image and the whole screen can at times become one grey mass black block with no image details visible, which are clearly seen on the Panasonic next to it. The lack of dynamics and contrast does make HDR content look flat and uninspiring. Colours are also a struggle and the yellow tint seen after calibration with SDR images is also present here in HDR content. We also found that images again had a false sharpness to them at times and there is no way to dial that out in the settings, pointing to black door processing being added. Taking into account the price point of the Sharp UI7652 and the fact that this is a budget TV built to a price point, we do feel that the overall image quality is still not quite what it should be on offer, especially when compared to the Panasonic GX800 which is only £100 more at the time of this review. The gulf in picture performance feels a lot more than that. The Sharp is built to a price point and is clearly a TV we couldn't recommend to AV Forum's readers who are looking for image accuracy. It's a mass market TV that does have a few features added but doesn't offer the kind of image performance we think enthusiasts will want, even in a second or third room TV. There are far better examples out there from Hisense, Panasonic and Samsung in this market area. The menus available on the Sharp UI7652 are very basic in nature, with just a one-point white balance control and a CMS system that does appear to work fully. Other picture settings are also basic, with three settings for gamma, some noise reduction and active contrast options, along with the normal front panel controls of brightness, contrast, etc. The NetPlus Smart TV system is rather basic in nature, with only a handful of apps with 4K available on YouTube and Netflix. BBC iPlayer is also available, but we had a real issue with loading any content from the player throughout our time testing the Sharp. There are far better systems available on competing TVs from LG, Sony, Hisense, Panasonic and Samsung. The Sharp UI7652 is a budget LCD TV that is built to fit within a certain price point. It's a 4K HDR TV with some smart TV capabilities from Sharp's NetPlus system. The build quality is adequate with hard plastics used throughout with a larger bezel than contemporary TVs at this price point. The gunmetal grey finish also looks budget in its appearance, with stand feet at either end of the panel which means you'll need a large mounting surface if table mounting. 
The remote control is a plastic affair that has all the buttons you would expect, and again it fits the budget price point in terms of materials and finish. We get three HDMI connections on the rear, which are HDMI 2.0 in nature, with one ARC compatible. The menus and calibration controls are minimal, but then again we doubt anyone buying a TV at this price point will get it calibrated. Picture quality in the best movie setting is fairly accurate when watching directly in front of the TV, but other attributes do impact on the performance. The VA panel used has a distinct yellow tint even after calibration, which is obvious when viewing in any of the picture modes. Viewing angles are also very poor with contrast and colour shifts as soon as you get off axes. We also found the black levels and overall contrast performance, even directly viewed, to be poor when compared to the competition from Hisense and Panasonic. Shadow detail above black is non-existent, and behind the scenes picture processing adds noise reduction and edge enhancement that cannot be defeated. This is not a TV for anyone looking for image accuracy to the standards and decent dynamic range for HDR content. The Sharp is a budget TV built to a price point and it shows in the fit and finish, along with the lacklustre image quality. It will find a market with consumers looking for the latest features at a cheap price and for a large amount of screen real estate. And that screen is big for the money being asked at 60 inches. For AV Forums members looking for a decent screen at this level of the market, there are much better TVs out there from Hisense, Samsung and Panasonic to name just three.